Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bakley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bakley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bakley. Welcome to The Coming Apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and today we have a powerful broadcast for you. We're going to be looking in the book of Revelation at some of the apocalyptic signs that are taking place and events that are about to unfold. That We are going to be looking at the fifth angel of Revelation, but we'll also take a peek at some of the events just before he opens the bottomless pit. Are you serious? Are you serious? Something biblical is going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ. It is time that people realize, you know, the Bible told us to look at these prophecies. Jesus said, watch and pray for an hour. You think not the son of man cometh. Well, he's coming soon. And my brand new book, Revelation 9, 11 is tied to these scriptures. It's incredible what God is doing. We'll be right back in just a moment. The world is experiencing an alarming series of apocalyptic events, historic weather disasters, earthquakes, droughts, wildfires, impending economic collapse, the rise of AI. In Revelation 9-11, Pastor Paul Begley and Pulitzer-nominated journalist Troy Anderson investigate if these are the true signs of the end times. Is this the final meeting of current events and prophecy referred to in the Bible? Revelation 9-11. Order it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Target.com. All right, folks, all right, the fifth angel. There are seven angels. There's seven churches. There's seven golden candlesticks. There's seven vials, and there's seven last plagues. There's seven trumpets. I mean, throughout the entire book of Revelation, seven is a key number. But this fifth angel who has a key, is given a key to the bottomless pit, will unleash one of hell's, I mean, demonic... Uh, generals, if you will, Apollyon, or the destroyer, coming from the pit, the abyss of darkness, out of a place called Abaddon, or the place of destruction. But before we talk about that, let's see the things leading up to it. We're about ready to have a major event on, of course, April the 8th, 2024. There's no other way around it. This solar eclipse is unbelievable. It's the second solar eclipse in a seven year period that crosses America. And I'm gonna share with you some of the events that's gonna go on that day and how they're tied to the Bible. Let's go to Revelation chapter eight, verse eight for a moment. The Bible says, and the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and a third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third part of the ships were destroyed. So this angel is bringing with it some type of deep impact. It's going to hit the ocean, but it's so strong that a third of the uh, ships of the ocean will be destroyed. So this is catastrophic. Wherever this is going to hit, it's going to do some catastrophic event in the oceans. The, go to verse 10 now. The third angel sounded. And there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And a third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were bitter or poisonous, probably from the radiation from this asteroid. So you're looking at either a double whammy the same day, maybe, or maybe you're looking at two separate events. We don't get a time frame here, but we do know that there's two different angels that bring this. Now here's something to know, that in five years from now, uh, actually on April the 13th, Friday the 13th, 2029, there is a asteroid headed toward the Earth that is three football fields in size. NASA has said it's not going to hit the Earth, 
but they have also said that uh, it's going to be razor close. Matter of fact, the satellites that go around the Earth are at 22,000 miles from the surface of the Earth. This asteroid will come within 18,000 miles at the last calculation by NASA. It's five years away. But even if this big asteroid call, called Apophis, which is in Egypt, Egypt it's called the God of Chaos. That's why they named it Apophis. Even if it doesn't hit the Earth, it has debris, a trail of rocks that are following it. And it's very possible that we could get hit with a couple of those smaller rocks that could cause the events of Revelation chapter 8, verse 8 through 11. We don't know, but if so, we got five years and counting on that one. Now let's go to the fourth angel, because the Bible says, then that the fourth angel sounded, and a third part of the sun were smitten, and a third part of the moon, and a third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Um, and I heard uh, this angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. So this fourth angel says that the sun will be darkened, the moon and the stars will be darkened. Uh, it will be an incredible event. What causes that? Um, and a solar eclipse would certainly cause a darkening of the sun. But what about the, the stars and the moon? This could be from a massive volcano that could erupt on the earth. It's happened before. It can happen again. And obviously, it's in the Bible as a major event that's going to take place on the earth. Another apocalyptic sign. Speaking of that, on April the 8th, 2024, we're going to have the second solar eclipse. There's been two of them now in a seven-year period. And as they both crossed America, X marks the spot right in the heartland of America. Matter of fact, it's in a place called Carbondale, Illinois, uh, which is known in that area as Little Egypt. There's even a little town not far from there by the name of Cairo. And Southern Illinois University is in Carbondale, and the mascot of the school is the Seleucids, which is the dog of the pharaohs. There's, there's even a, a pyramid not far near St. Louis from there. And on this day of this eclipse, which is going to come through America through eight different times, it's going to hit a city called Nineveh, as it goes. I mean, just throw that at you. And what's really wild about that is when the first eclipse came through, it came through in Salem, Oregon, and it left Salem, South Carolina. And during that path, it hit seven cities or towns by the name of Salem. Now, Salem is, in, is for short, Jerusalem. Okay, Jerusalem. So the first one gave us eight or seven, excuse me, seven cities called Jerusalem. This one goes through eight towns or cities by the name of Nineveh. This is quite extraordinary, but it's going to take place. Now, as this uh, solar eclipse takes place, four and a half minutes long, uh, the moon, of course, is in front of the sun. And as it's in front of the sun, there's also a satellite, uh, excuse me, there is a, uh, a comet. This comet's name is 12P, Pons Brooks, and it just so happens on that day that it's already made its perihelium. It's come around the sun, headed our direction, not to hit us, but just in our direction. And when the sun goes dark during this eclipse, you'll be able to see with the naked eye this comet in the shadow of the sun, which is very interesting when Jesus said that there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves will be roaring and men's hearts will fail them for fear for looking after those things coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven will be shaken. 
But then we're going to see a sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your head, your redemption is drawing nigh. Well, besides the comet that's coming around that you'll see at, during the solar eclipse, the same day, seven of our planets go in perfect alignment during this eclipse. And while that's happening uh, here on Earth, there will be, and it could be that day, it could happen at any time from late March to mid-May. There are two different species of cicadas. One comes out of the earth every 13 years, the other one every 17 years. It just so happens that they're both coming out of the earth the same time. In where? Southern Illinois or Little Egypt. And it could be they come out during, or they may have already come out at the time of this eclipse. And that's like locusts, if you know what a cicada is. And, and, and what's incredible about this is it's going to be taking place. The last time that has happened was 1803. So these, now we talk about signs. Man, these are God signs. Every one of these are purposely uh, directed and uh, orchestrated and set in motion by God himself. No man-made events. Uh, when you look at um, the other signs we've had in the past, Y2K, nothing came of it, but everybody thought it was the end of the world. Um, when the Mayan calendar, whenever it was set that it was the end of time on December 21st, 2012, nothing came of it. It was a man-made calendar. And of course, then we also had another event uh, where man set things in motion and it failed. It was Harold Camping who said the rapture was going to happen on May the 21st, 2011. You know how that were, but we're all here. But these signs that I'm talking about are God's signs, God directed, God orchestrated, and all of them are signs that Jesus said to watch for because you don't, you know not what hour your Lord doth come. He said, watch and pray. For you know not the day nor the hour the Lord cometh. Now, the fifth angel. This is what we want to talk about, the fifth angel. It says in chapter 9, and my book is Revelation 9-11. It's based on this event that's coming in the Bible. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. To him was given the key of the bottomless pit. He opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and upon them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So we're going to get a fifth angel. He's coming with the key to the bottomless pit. And there, when he opens that pit, there will be released smoke uh, and uh, locusts, really it's the release of the demons of hell to be re leashed upon the earth. And it's a time like we've never seen before. This is the fifth angel of God. And so uh, we're going to see some incredible events. Now these locusts are like no other locusts. Uh, they have the ability to sting men and hurt very bad. Uh, this is a bad sign, but it's one that's coming. But there's more. I'll tell you about it when I come back in just a moment. The world is experiencing an alarming series of apocalyptic events, historic weather disasters, earthquakes, droughts, wildfires, impending economic collapse, the rise of AI. In Revelation 9-11, Pastor Paul Begley and Pulitzer-nominated journalist Troy Anderson investigate if these are the true signs of the end times. Is this the final meaning of current events and prophecy referred to in the Bible? Revelation 9-11. Order it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Target.com. All right, folks. All right. So, I mean, that's insanity if you think about it. How many things are going to happen on that day of April the 8th, 2024? And oh, by the way, these two 
eclipses were in a seven year period. Not that it has anything to do with the seven years of, of tribulation, but I'm just saying. Now let's go to Revelation 9 verse 5. Check this out. This fifth angel also, what he does. And to them, these, um, uh, there was these people, these locusts, I mean, to them was given that they should not kill them when they sting men, but that they should be tormented five months and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when the striketh a man. Now, some people have thought maybe these aren't actual locusts. Maybe these are drones, little bitty drones swarming and stinging men, not killing them, but it hurts so bad it hurt for five months. Think about this a minute. But at the time that John saw this vision, there's no such thing as drones the size of flies or the size of a dragonfly or the size of a mosquito. But today we have those or the size of a locust. And think about this. If people during the time of the mark of the beast, if people are refusing to take the mark, and I'm sure that the mark of the beast is going to be during a period of time. There's a grace period where people have to decide if they're going to be in this or not. Imagine this. Uh, people being uh, hunted down and stung by some type of uh, supernatural locust, maybe, or man-made drone locust. Not sure, but something to keep in mind. Look at verse 6. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Now, there is such a thing as being able to be, you can be paralyzed, you know, you can be put into a coma, uh, and, uh, and it's called an induced coma, and you can be put on machinery, and you actually can be uh, kept away from dying if medically, uh, or imagine if they've even advanced technology to susp suspend people, to leave them in some type of state of paralysis without letting them pass on or move on. I don't know, but it will be a, de a desperate time. Verse 7 says, The shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. Uh, they're strange looking. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. That's the second time it says that. This five months, this 150 days, this period of time where maybe that is during a time when people have to decide whether they're going to take the mark or not. The Bible doesn't say that, but certainly it is a terrible event taking place. But it gets, the next moment is when all of hell breaks loose. It's a term that we say, but it really does. Here it is. Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. The title of our book, 9-11. In the book, we do more than just talk about what happens here. We tell you that leading up to this event, the earth goes through a traumatic social and economic and a spiritual transformation of darkness. We are already seeing the cancel culture going on in our world today. The Green New Deal or the Green Religion, worshiping Mother Earth instead of Father God. The UFO, alien deception that's going on right now that could bring strong delusion. We're, we're being told that aliens uh, are, are, is our creator, that aliens, some type of aliens seeded us on the earth and to watch us and, and are setting back. And, but because we are getting vicious in war and nuclear capability, they're coming back to straighten us out. Uh, these things are being preached and taught on television and in universities and in books and movies all over the world. I'm here to tell you that this is all part of that grand delusion of the spirit of the Antichrist because of the hordes of hell that's being turned loose. 
And the, the, you know, we talk about Apophis, the asteroid in the book, and the solar flares. We talk about you know, the blood moons, and we talk about a lot of things, the Middle East and Russia, the wars and rumors of wars. We talk about many things in the book, so I really recommend you get it, uh, Revelation 9-11. But let's go to this verse. Look what happens. It says in Revelation 9-11, they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the Hebrew tongue, Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. The Greek word Apollyon means uh, the destroyer. And the word Abaddon in Hebrew means the place of destruction. So the destroyer from hell is turned loose on the earth. So when I read to you angel number two, three, and four, that was bad. But angel five turns loose hell itself upon the planet. And the Bible says, woe unto, the woe is past, and behold, there come two more woes. The sixth angel, the seventh angel, which are yet to come. This event of Revelation 9-11, and isn't it interesting? What's, when you think of 9-11, and when I talk about this in my book, we talk about what happened on 9-11, 2001, when the Twin Towers and the plane crashes and the Pentagon and, and all the things. That, do you remember how you felt? How vulnerable we all felt. We all knew we were under attack. We didn't know who our enemy really was. Uh, but we didn't know how many cities were going to get hit. Uh, and there was a sense of dread that spread across America during that day. Well, that 9-11 pales in comparison to this 9-11. And isn't it funny that this verse is actually in chapter 9, verse 11? You think that happened by accident? Again, God is setting things in motion. And so we have to warn people that the coming of Jesus Christ is soon. Uh, and that we need to get right with God. Matter of fact, in our book, I know I'm talking about that. We talk about the great harvest, the outpouring. It's, it's not all bad. Just because the devil's attacking and turning the world upside down, that isn't the only thing going on. The great end time harvest will also take place. Whereas people with great revivals will break out across the world. That's already beginning also. We're seeing tremendous revival right now in India. Uh, I've been supporting India now since I was a little boy, actually. And I've been supporting India since 1996. Uh, and there's a pastor I have there by the name of Samantha Nike, Sammy Nike. And he and now, we've been supporting him in the orphanage. And then he got a few other preachers uh, as evangelists. Well, now he has 250 evangelists that are working for our ministry. And they're out every day riding their bicycles in the, in the jungles, in the streets, preaching Jesus Christ. And thousands of people are coming to massive tent revivals. I've been there and preached some myself, but now the crowds are 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 people coming to the Lord. This is just part. You got the uh, underground revival with the women in Iran. You have the massive revivals going on in South America. Unbelievable. In Brazil, Venezuela, Colombia, all throughout Central and South America. There's a move of God even here in America, but also Satan is at work. So what we look at this fifth angel, when he gets ready, when he gets ready to unlock hell's gates, we got to get ready. We've got to get ready to take the gospel message to the world. And the Lord said, prepare the people. He told me when I was in a dream and, and he came to me in, the, in a dream, like a vision, he showed me the in red letters, Revelation 9, 11. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Paul, it's about to happen. It's upon mankind. Go tell the people, write a book. And so uh, I teamed up with my co-author, Troy Anderson. We put the book together. It took us two years. We talk about the secret societies, the World Economic Forum, the Great Reset, the New World Order, the Deep State. We tell you everything that Satan is working. He's working. But God is working. God is working. Christ is conquering. It's in him that we live, move, and have our very being. Are you serious? Are you serious? I'll be right back in just a moment. 
The world is experiencing an alarming series of apocalyptic events, historic weather disasters, earthquakes, droughts, wildfires, impending economic collapse, the rise of AI. In Revelation 9-11, Pastor Paul Begley and Pulitzer-nominated journalist Troy Anderson investigate if these are the true signs of the end time. Is this the final meaning of current events and prophecy referred to in the Bible? Revelation 9-11. Order it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Target.com. All right, folks. All right. Jesus is coming soon, and things are going to change when he comes. Matter of fact, let's go to Revelation chapter 22. Look at this, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there was a tree of life. It bare twelve manner of fruits, yield her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him. And they shall see His face, and His name shall be in their Foreheads. We talked earlier about the mark of the beast, uh, but there is also the mark of God. And so, it, look, I'm telling you, things are going to change. There'll be no more dying, no more crying, no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow. It's a great day when the Lord comes. Uh, praise God for that. I'm also going to tell you that unless and if we don't accept Christ, we will be part of this wrath of God, which I don't want any of us to go through. But if you give your life to Jesus Christ, if you repent of your sins, you just ask him to come into your heart and just say, Lord, can you, I, I know I'm a sinner. Can you forgive me? Will you cleanse me and make me a child of God? And the Bible says with the mouth, uh, confessions made unto salvation. The heart believes unto the righteousness. This is your moment. Please accept Jesus as your Savior. Amen. Find out all about other uh, events going on, our schedule of events, our webinars we do, our DVDs and books and information, music CDs, everything we have at our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Get the book Revelation 9-11. The reason I'm saying this is God instructed me to do it. And I went and found a Pulitzer Prize nominated journalist who's a Christian named Troy Anderson to team up with me to help us research all the events going on right now, how Satan is trying to destroy the human race. But in that, in that battle, there's victory in Jesus. Come to our website, paulbegleyprophecy.com. Help us, if you will. We're sending blankets to people that are very ill, some of them terminally ill, some of them very, very bad, and we're trusting God for their divine healing. And people are being healed and saved. So until next time, I really want to see you here. Tell people about this broadcast. Same time, same channel, right here on the coming apocalypse.